Creative Fabrica has tons of graphics and fonts, but now they're starting to make their own design tools like Spark Studio. How does it work? Well, let's check it out. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're looking at Creative Fabrica's new design tool. Now for those who aren't familiar with it, Creative Fabrica is a graphics and font website. I use them all the time and use the yearly subscription which has unlimited downloads. Currently it's $47 per year, which is a pretty insane deal, so I use it basically every single day and it's paid for itself over many times. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to explore their site and check it out. Now one thing they've been doing recently is adding a lot more tools like background removers and vectorizers. And now we have this new tool called Spark Studio. So I thought I'd take a look, show you how it works, and give you my thoughts and tips. So we can access it via this link on the homepage under Studio. So I'll click this button here. Now I'm recording in February of 2024, so the tool is still pretty new. It's not going to have all the bells and whistles of all the other online design tools, but let's see what's there so far. Now if you used Canva, a lot of these features will be pretty familiar. It doesn't have all the functions of Canva yet because it's still pretty new, but it has a pretty solid foundation here. Now when you first create a project with Add a New Design, you can select from tons of different templates here. This is your standard print templates, but they also have print-on-demand templates here for a lot of the common formats. For example, Amazon shirts, Printify stickers, t-shirts, and mugs. Now what this is going to do is it's just going to determine the size of your document. So I'll just choose something random. Let's just do standard here. I'll say create new design. Now once your design is created, you have the option to select more templates. So I'll click the templates here. And these are actually going to be design templates. These are actually going to have graphics and placeholder text on them. So once again, I'll select Etsy. And you can see we have all these pre-made Etsy templates here. So I'll select one here, Crafty Wonders. And it's going to say, do I want to create a new design or just completely replace this current design I chose? I'll choose Replace Current Design. And you'll see we have all the options we can change here. I can zoom in and out with the Control key. Maybe I want to change the name of my store. I can rearrange the different graphics here. But a lot of these are pretty good if you just want to get something up and running quickly. But let me close this and I'll go back to creating a new project from scratch. So I'll say add new design. So over here we can actually change the width and height and let's see what the maximum we can do is. So here it says the maximum we can do is 11,000 by 11,000 pixels. And that's actually pretty nice because it means at 300 dpi we can make an image up to 36 inches wide on a side. If we wanted to do 150 dpi that could be 72 inches. So this is really good for some of those bigger products on Printify. Now let's look at Canva here. I'll create a design. Let's say custom size. If I try 11,000 here, it says that the maximum size I can do is 8,000 on a side. So if I do 8,000, I can do that. Let's try the other side at 8,000. So here we have an issue with Canva where if I do 8,000 on one side, the other side can only be 3,125 pixels. So in Canva, this is the maximum size we can do right now as far as I can tell. 8,000 by 3,125. And in Spark Studio, we can get up to 11,000 by 11,000. So right now it seems like Spark Studio is allowing much bigger images than Canva. Okay, so let's look at some of the tools here and what they actually allow us to do. So we looked at the templates briefly already. There's lots of ones here for cards, stationery, all sorts of things. Below that we have Spark AI, and this is one of their AI image generation tools. So this can be useful for generating really quick assets. Maybe I want to make a birthday cake, watercolor style. So I'll click Create Image. It takes some time to generate. But we get our results here and we can click on them to put them in the document. Now what I like is that they give you transparency by default a lot of the time. So the black color here is actually transparent. So you can see in our image it's transparent. Now it's the early days of AI generation. So these tools, the results will definitely vary. But it's often nice for quick, simple little assets. Now below that we have graphics and these are going to be your pre-made raster images. And they're transparent PNGs. So we can scroll through and you can see what's there. Be sure to click on these arrows here to get more options. So this gives you the more sophisticated search tools. You can even filter by color. So if your image, say, tends to be orange, you can click on orange. And if you scroll down, you can get things that are more orange. So say flowers. I guess these are images with flowers in them. We can select frames. There's many more options down here. But really the key here is make sure you click on this button to expand it and get more options. Elements, on the other hand, are going to be your vector shapes. And these are things that can scale infinitely. So for example, we have this Cupid here. I can make him bigger, and he's never going to get pixelated. Even if I zoom in, we're always going to have these smooth edges. Now elements are also where you can get your primitive shapes like circles and rectangles, triangles. You can drag them out here, and using the controls you can change the colors, and build wherever you want. Now here we have the photos. I don't know how many of these are actual real photos. I assume a lot of them are AI generated, but they're pretty good. Once again, you have a filter option up here, so you can click this. You can filter by aspect ratio or color. So let's say I want dark blue. 
I can filter by dark blue colors. Now below that we have backgrounds and these are gonna be things with negative space in it that allow you to add your own elements. So they can have big empty areas. We have this one here. You can see we have other kind of framing images. This one's pretty cool with the watercolor flowers. Now a really important thing to know about the backgrounds is that when you add them to your image, I can't move it around. This is because they're locked by default. And the way you unlock it is you go over here in your layer stack and click the little lock icon. And now I can actually move it around. But this confused me when I first started because I couldn't figure out how to like actually move it. But you just have to unlock it over here. And when you're done, you can actually lock it again. And you're probably going to want to have it locked because otherwise you're going to accidentally click and move it a lot of the time. So I know why they did it, but it's a little frustrating if you don't know that's so what you have to do it first. Next, we have our patterns, and these are going to be our seamless patterns. So let me find one that's kind of complicated. This flower one looks pretty complex. So I can resize it here. And the key to this one is this button up here, these four squares. If I click repeat on background, now it will tile the image. And you can zoom in, you can see that it's seamless there. You do see a little gap there, but I'm assuming that will go away. All design tools that use patterns on websites almost always have seem to have some type of gap in the GUI tool. But you should download and double check whenever you use a pattern. Now this shows one issue I have with the tool so far, which is the names in the layer stack. You actually can't change them. And this group here has kind of this random letters. This is the pattern we just added. So if I toggle it, you can see it goes on and off. But it kind of gives it these random letters, which I guess means something on the programming side of things. But they're not really that meaningful for us, the designers. And it definitely gets hard to manage as you add more things and these random letters bunch up on your layer stack here, which we'll see later. So hopefully in the future, we can actually start customizing the layer names ourselves to give some meaning to it. Now I jumped over the text here. So let's look at that. There's some pre-made text options here. I assume this list will get longer as the program develops. You can add heading, subheading, and body. As far as I can tell, this just determines the default size of the text you add. So if I add a heading, it's that size. I'll add some more text, subheading. You can add body text. Now there's a couple of things I noticed about text. First, you're limited to the fonts that are already here. It's actually a pretty extensive list, so I think you'll find something to suit your style. But currently you can't add your own fonts to it. But the list is pretty good. Also, the max font size you can enter in this UI is 250. So if I type something higher, let's say 500, it doesn't work. It just goes to 250. However, you can rescale it with these boxes here. So the text does go higher, but you can't actually type it in there. And I'm not sure why they made that decision. If you're doing big objects like posters, you'll definitely want to have the size bigger than 250. And right now, the only way to actually do that is to drag this text to make it bigger. It's a little inconvenient. It would be easier if we could just type it in there. So that's a change I'd like to see in the future, changing the text size with the text box here. Now down at the bottom, we also have these drawing options here. And you can draw freeform shapes if you like with the different options. You have the marker, pens, pencil. And of course, you can change the colors. The color is customizable. Just click on the little eyedropper there to make it something you like. So one question I had is, what are the integrations with the Creative Fabrica asset library? Can we bring in graphics from Creative Fabrica? And the answer is that currently there isn't an automated way of doing this. So for example, if I look at some random clip art on Creative Fabrica here, let's say this watercolor cute space clip art, I would have to download it and then re-upload it to the Spark Studio. So I just do download here and you download it to your computer. And then once it's downloaded, you would unzip it. And over here you would click uploads and you could upload it here. So there isn't a way to just bring it all over with one click. And I kind of understand why they don't want to do that. There's only five gigabytes available, so probably people would fill up their space pretty quickly if it was just that easy. So you do want to think about what you bring up here because a lot of Creative Fabrica files, when you download them, they might be a couple hundred megabytes of PNG files, and that can add up pretty quickly on your storage. So I uploaded some files here, and you can also create your own folders here. So I created one called Space Art, and I just put stuff in there. So it is kind of easy to organize. So to put this tool through its paces, I thought I'd try making a poster from Printify. This tends to be a bigger product, so I thought it'd be a good test to see how the bigger file sizes work. If I click Start Designing here, I can expand the print area size. And for 24 inches by 36 inches, it says it should be 7200 by 10,800 pixels. So that's pretty nice. If I go to Studio here, I can add a new design. And as we saw earlier, that's well within the requirements here. 7200 by 10,800. Now create a design. Now I thought I'd make an alphabet poster for a kid's room, so let's try that. Now I created the initial letters. I can select them all, and I can change the font in one click. That one looks pretty interesting. I'll change the background of my image. I'll make it something dark blue, say. Kind of a space theme. Let's select all the letters. I'll make them white for now. Maybe I'll change them something else later. I have my uploads down here. I'll just click them, and they'll appear on my poster. Let's add some planets. 
at a cool ship. Of course, we need an astronaut here. It can be tricky to click on the one you want sometimes. One thing I do like is that design elements can be put off into this side area here. Now, of course, they're not going to show up, but it is kind of like a nice little scrap area here to put stuff temporarily. If I hold Alt and drag, they'll copy the object. Now you're starting to see the issue I mentioned before, which is in the layer stack here, we have all these random numbers for our objects. Which of them is which? I don't really know unless I click on it. So I guess that one is the spaceship. That one is one of the stars. So it's a little frustrating. Hopefully that will change in the future. I'll keep on working on this and I'll show you the final result. So here's the final result. Let me download it and upload it to Printify and see how it looks. So to download it, I'll click Share. And I'll click download. I'll download a PNG. It may be kind of big, but that's all right. I'll call it my space poster. Now I'm back in Printify here. Let's upload it. My space poster. It's only 20 megabytes. And here we go. Our design uploaded. Let's click preview and see some lifestyle mockups there. So we have what it would look like on a wall. There's another one. And of course, we can make our own mockups too. Posters are one of the easiest things in the world to make mockups for. It's just a rectangle that you just put on a wall. Now, you may be wondering, what does the license allow you to do with this? Can you make these designs and put them on print-on-demand products? And the answer is yes, you can. I encourage you to read the license itself. If you click on the menu over here and then click the license button, you can see what it allows you to do. It basically allows you to do everything except sell a single image by itself. So by a single image, I mean you can't just take one graphic, put it on your design, and just sell this. However, if you actually add other things to it, like if I add the butterfly, maybe I add some text, this would be actually fine to do whatever you want with it. But I encourage you to read the license. So the initial release of Spark Studio is definitely a nice tool that hopefully will give Canva some much needed competition. If you want to give it a try, click the link down in the description below. And of course, if you're a designer, I highly recommend signing up for Creative Fabrica to begin with, especially for all the fonts and graphics you get. I use it almost every day. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.